According to the CDC, the obesity prevalence in America was 41.9% between 2017 and 2020. Just 10 years ago, no state had obesity incidents above 35%. Over the past three years, many patients have gained weight with more sedentary lifestyles due to COVID-19 while staying at home, avoiding the gym due to the potential for respiratory spread and working remotely. For a long time, patients were avoiding attending social events, so walking much less. Today, gastroenterologists are having an increasing number of patients ask for help with weight loss, so we wanted to provide a helpful guide for both patients and physicians. There are many ways that gastroenterologists can help obese patients with weight loss. I'm Benjamin Levy, a gastroenterologist at the University of Chicago and a member of the American College of Gastroenterology's FDA Related Matters Committee. I like to provide a primer for achievable weight loss. Number one, glucagon-like peptide 1 or GLP-1 receptor agonists have become a popular treatment for type 2 diabetes and weight loss. These medications have helped patients achieve weight loss with tremendous success. These weight loss medications are given as an injection either weekly or daily, depending on the type. They work by stimulating the body to produce insulin, which in turn lowers blood sugars. GLP-1 receptor agonists also slow peristalsis and the movement of food from the stomach into the small bowel, which allows patients to feel fuller longer and decreases hunger and eat less. There are two FDA approved GLP-1 receptor agonists approved for weight loss in patients without diabetes, laraglutide or Saxenda and semaglutide or Wagovi. There are also lower dose versions of these active ingredients by the names Ozempic and Victoza designed to help diabetic patients achieve better glucose and hemoglobin A1C control. In November 2023, the FDA approved a new medication called Zepbound, which is a GIP glucose dependent isolinotropic polypeptide plus GLP-1 receptor agonist. This is a very exciting time for the management of type 2 diabetes and weight loss. Gastroenterologists can work with endocrinologists and primary care physicians to help patients choose appropriate weight loss medications. Gastroenterologists should also be aware of common GLP-1 receptor agonist side effects, including nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and in severe cases, hypoglycemia. These medications can also cause pancreatitis, acute kidney injury and worsening diabetes related retinopathy, tachycardia, headaches, indigestion, gastroparesis, bowel obstruction, or ileus. We don't use these medications in patients with a family or personal history of medullary thyroid cancer or multiple endocrine neoplasia. Consider avoiding using in patients with a personal history of pancreatitis. Recently, the American Society of Anesthesiologists, or ASA, suggested holding the day of surgery or weekly dose of GLP-1 agonists prior to elective surgery and endoscopy procedures due to case reports of aspiration. Gastrologists and anesthesiologists are working together to make esophagogastrodeutinoscopies, otherwise known as EGDs, and colonoscopies as safe as possible. According to the ASA recommendations, GLP-1 agonists that are daily dose are supposed to be held on the day of their procedure. Weekly dose versions are supposed to be held for one week prior to their colonoscopy or EGD. During EGD procedures, I also recommend keeping the head of the bed at a 45 degree angle to help prevent aspiration even further. Gastroenterologists are eagerly awaiting for additional studies to determine whether holding GLP-1 agonist prior to endoscopy is really necessary. But for now, we recommend following the ASA guidelines. Gastroenterologists and primary care physicians constantly advise our patients to avoid consuming sugary drinks such as soda, fruit juices, calorie-laden coffee drinks, sweetened tea, hot chocolate, and of course, alcohol. Many of our patients drink three to six of these sugary drinks a day. As a gastroenterologist, it's important to counsel our overweight patients and to obtain an accurate history of both their daily and weekly consumption of excess calories. Recommend substituting sugary drinks with water, unsweetened tea, either hot or cold, and coffee. In order to prevent constipation, encourage patients to drink at least eight eight ounce glasses of fluid per day. Drinking water, tea, and coffee can also help keep patients feeling fuller longer and avoid those tempting snacks. Every day I encourage my patients to avoid eating fried 
fatty foods, and processed meats. This also helps prevent colon cancer. We also advise patients to avoid junk food full of carbohydrates and salt. Instead, patients should try to eat a piece of fruit or a vegetable with every meal, every single meal, which keeps patients feeling fuller longer, prevents diverticular from forming, and can even help prevent colon cancer. Making small dietary changes can dramatically reduce daily calorie consumption, which adds up over time and can help patients lose weight in a safe way. Meal prepping for the week, like on a Sunday, is a very simple way to eat more nutritious foods instead of constantly getting takeout and fast food. Many of our patients have also successfully lost weight through intermittent fasting. We recommend working with a nutritionist on this one. A Mediterranean diet is also a great way to go. I encourage patients to take daily walks, swim, play sports, take fitness classes, perform yoga or Pilates, and use weights at a gym. Exercise burns calories, which is great for our hearts, prevents hepatic steatosis, and helps relieve stress. Exercise also stimulates peristalsis, which can help our constipated patients achieve more regular bowel movements. A few things to keep in mind. Try to avoid strenuous exercise right after eating, as this will help prevent both heartburn and GERD. A gastric balloon procedure is a temporary obesity treatment that helps patients lose weight by reducing the volume of the stomach so that patients feel full more easily. This can be accomplished endoscopically through the mouth without the need for actual surgery. Basically, a deflated balloon is placed through the mouth using an endoscope and advanced into the stomach by a gastroenterologist or surgeon. The balloon is inflated with salt water and can remain in the stomach for six months before it is removed. This helps patients feel full and consequently eat less, leading to a gradual and safe weight loss. There's also an endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty procedure, sometimes called an encording procedure, where the EG tube is equipped with small stitching instruments that are used to reduce the size of the stomach. This technique is used for patients with a BMI of 30 or more when diet and exercise alone have failed. This procedure has less complications than open or laparoscopic surgery and can be reversed. Number seven. Another technique is having a gastroenterologist inject botulinum toxin into the stomach wall. This works by relaxing the stomach propulsive muscles, which delays gastric emptying so that patients feel fuller longer and more easily. This approach is good for moderate weight loss, approximately 5 to 10 percent of body weight, and works best in combination with a good diet and exercise. The effect of the botulinum toxin can last for three months, and the procedure can be repeated every six months. Gastroenterologists should also counsel patients on exercise, stress management, and the importance of sleep to prevent overeating. Self-care is extremely important for patients. Walk, swim, lift weights, and play sports. I personally love basketball and tennis. Recommend allocating enough time for sleep each night. At least seven to nine hours of sleep is ideal. Good sleep hygiene can help. Keep a stable sleep schedule. Create a comfortable bedroom that is free of disruptions like TV watching, or playing on your phone or computer. Gastroenterologists can provide simple instructions to patients. Unplug from electronics 30 to 60 minutes prior to sleep. Try to avoid eating late at night. This will also help patients prevent GERD and heartburn symptoms. Number nine, Ally or Orlistat is an oral over-the-counter lipase inhibitor, which inhibits fat absorption in the intestines. However, this drug can interfere with fat-soluble vitamin absorption vitamins A, D, E, and K. So it's important to take a multivitamin two hours before or two hours after taking Orlistat. However, Orlistat can cause steatorrhea, so it's often not our first choice. I highly recommend that gastroenterologists regularly refer patients to a registered dietitian for medical nutrition therapy. It's helpful for dietitians to help patients establish nutritional goals with calorie limits. I find that many of my patients like the nutritional counseling the dietitians provide, and this can even be done via telemedicine. A dietitian will examine a patient's eating habits and help them set weight loss goals that are both realistic and achievable. Having a dietitian motivate a patient through several clinic visits is important for success. A dietitian can plan how many calories to eat in a day while maintaining food protein and vitamin intake. With this therapy, many patients are able to lose approximately one to one and a half pounds each week. A dietitian can help keep patients accountable for their weight loss goals. I encourage my patients to use their dietitian as a weight loss teacher and a coach 
who can personalize a diet plan that tastes great. Some of our patients also have overlapping GI issues, such as celiac disease or IBS. So dietitians can also formulate diets that are great for these other diagnoses too. There are also apps available on our phones to help with diet and weight loss. It's important for gastroenterologists to work with patients to achieve weight loss. Addressing obesity is sometimes a difficult topic to bring up with patients, but very important. Together, we can help treat obesity, plus improve and prevent hepatic steatosis, metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease, or MASLD, and metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic hepatitis, or MASH. The estimated global prevalence of MASLD is 32% in adults, so gastroenterologists and hepatologists are working together to try to treat obesity and to prevent long-term liver disease.